I'm Bob Lee. I'm Communications Director with Responsibility for Europe, Middle East and Asia with Great Place to Work Global. And I'm here today with Debbie Smith, who's Managing Director at Boots Ireland. Welcome, Debbie. Boots has consistently been strong in the area of developing people with a great variety of training practices in place. Now, this year you took it to the next level with the introduction of performance leadership, which is, in essence, is a new performance development system. Can you tell me about this? Well, it's much more about the ambition that we've got for Boots in Ireland. So um, I really um, have a clear vision that um, I want to take the Boots brand to um, so many more people right across Ireland. And when I talk about the Boots brand, there's a couple of elements to that that are really important to me, which is around um, trust and care. So whether it's a customer coming into our stores, I want them to really feel that trust element, not just from our products, but from the people that they interact with. Um, and I also want them to feel cared for when they come into our stores. Mm. But if you then translate that to the people that work with us, or work, work for us, I absolutely want those people as well to feel that trust and care. So trust for the, the leaders they work for, trust of the people and the colleagues they work with, trust for the organisation, um, and also to feel cared for. Um, and because of that, what we said was we had an ambition to be number one for customer care, and number one as a place to work. Um, when in thinking about how we achieved that, there were several elements of which performance leadership is one element, but it is just one element. Because many times previously we have done things like we've introduced a performance management process mm. or we've, um, we've reprofiled our people in stores, but we've done them in isolation. And actually, you go so far but it's not enough to really achieve that ambition. So this time what we said was, that actually, we've got, to go, we've got to paint the whole picture and we've got to pull all the levers to really achieve that ambition. So what we did was we, we said, therefore, um, first of all, you've got to have people who are at their best for customers. And that's where the performance leadership element came in. But we also have done people in the right place or in the best place for customers, where we've reprofiled to make sure they're there when the customers need them to be there. Um, we've also then said, if you're actually saying um, this is what we want our people to be for customers, you've got to also recognise and reward them for that as well. So we, we've introduced as part of that reward for our best people for customers. We've trained and developed them. So we've done more training and development of our people and our leaders to be at the best for customers as well. And then we measure it. So we simply ask um, thousands of customers every week and we get about 500 responses every week about how they feel about um, being in our stores. And we also measure how our people feel is a great place to work. So if you take the performance leadership element of what I've, of what I've just shared, there are, um, there are three levels of performance. Um, so what we said was we raised our, raised our ambitions and said, this is how we want our people to be for customers. This is what we now expect of you. And we focus not on skills but more on behaviours. These are the behaviours and attitudes that we expect to see from you and we put those into three levels. So you know, if you start with performing, this is, this is what we at least expect of you when you're with our customers and that's classed as performing. We then said actually though if you are exhibiting some of these behaviours or you're not exhibiting these behaviours, actually that's not performing. So, so again really being clear about what not performing would look like. And then on the upside, we said, and actually, those people are really at our best for customers. These are the behaviours they exhibit, and that's legendary. And that's the, that's the behaviours we want in all of our people. But we have to recognise at the moment, we've got people in all, all those boxes. So we've got those people who are legendary, and we've got some great people that are legendary performers with customers. Um, we've got many who are performing, and we've still got a few that are not performing. You trained managers on how to have great conversations, but also how to have difficult conversations in order to create a more open communication culture. How did you approach that? So if you, th if you think back to um, what I shared around um, in, in aim to be number one for customer care and the number one for great place to work, when we looked at the elements of people in best place, um, people recognised, performance leadership, what we did was first is we took every single one of our store leaders out first. And we didn't just share about performance leadership and having difficult conversations or having great conversations. We shared with them the whole context of what we we're trying to achieve. So we wanted to inspire them. We wanted to engage and get them on that same journey. We wanted them to really want this as much as, as, as I as a leader and the leadership team wanted this. Um, and, and we got them engaged in that first by this, and we spent two days with them, really just getting them to understand it and then start to think about, so what does that mean for me? And one of the things that really came out of that, which comes out in a lot, you know, in many of us actually is, um, 
the big fear was how do I have those big conversations? How do I have, you know, it's easy to have the good conversations even though we still need to do more of them, but people were afraid of the difficult conversations because um, people generally don't want, like giving people what they perceive as bad news or difficult, difficult news. So we, what we then did is we then put everybody through a two day training course as well. Um, and, and we brought them out to really help them understand first about themselves so why is it I feel like this? Why do I find it difficult to have that conversation? What stops me? Um, um, and then we help them to think through how you do it and gave them some tools and techniques to help them make it easier. Um, so really getting them to um, you know, truly understand and listen to the person they're talking to. What was it about that person that, that they needed to help them with? Um, and, and, and also coming right back to, at the end of the day, it's a belief that to try and get in that people genuinely do want to know. You, they want you to be honest with them. They want to know where they, where they stand and what they need to do to be better. Um, and it was helping people to understand that, that that's not bad news. That's just being honest, it's integrity, it's genuine. As long as your intent is right to get the person to be better, people, people understand that and it comes across in the right way. Um, so, that's, so we spent two days really helping do that and then we do it constantly through our leadership. So when I'm in a store, I will focus on what's the conversations you're having with your people, show me who your best performers are, let me go and have a conversation with them. Who's not performing? Let me go and have a conversation. So we, we, we all then permeate that through my leadership, the regional managers, the area managers, the store managers. Culture is everything, isn't it? Because culture actually is the organisation, is, is in, in my mind how I, how I see it. So um, everything that you do um, comes back to that. So the culture that um, I am really building within Boots in Ireland is very congruent with um, our ambition and our values because again they've all got to line up mm. so um, the values are, so we have five values in the organization we have um, um, care trust entrepreneurship partnership and simplicity but the two of those really um, stand out for me around the care and the trust and they're very congruent as well with my own values so everything we do uh, anchors around that um, so when we're making decisions, when we're, you know, any business decision we're making, we're usually coming at it from an angle that says, um, if our ambition is, is to create this, this retail business in Boots where customers and people feel like they trust us and that we care for them, does what we're doing now contribute to that? or not, or does it go against it? And if it ever goes against it, then we're doing the wrong thing. Because yeah. everything should be, should be actually there about building the brand, building the relationship with people in Ireland as customers and people. Um, and how I go about instilling that is that, that that's very congruent with me. It's congruent to my values. Um, you know, I, I do, I've been with Boots 26 years now. I get up every day and still enjoy working for Boots because actually, um, I think, well, I absolutely passionately believe that in this business, you can have a purpose beyond profit. We're health and beauty. Mm. We can help people feel good you know we we talk about our ambition and our bigger vision is a mission is to champion everyone's right to feel good um, and I do think we can do that because if you look good you feel good and if you feel good you look good and it, so it's trying to help people to really feel for them what is that purpose beyond profit how are they going to make a difference every day they get up um, I feel that and I work with my leadership team to feel that and I'm just then expected to be cascaded through the organization when I certainly if I think about my executive team and, and, and then how they manage their people because I've got visibilities of that as well because we talk about that regularly is um, I absolutely focus on feedback measurement against behaviours not not just numbers so um, yeah absolutely you know performance and the numbers are important but I put more emphasis on how the job's done and how the leaders are behaving and how they are demonstrating those values um, and uh, all the development conversations I have when I spend time with my team um, or I spend time and, on store visits with some of the other leaders, my conversations are 90% about how are you being as a leader, mm. not about what was your sales number last week, what was this. I absolutely spend my time on that. And that's, that's, a, I, that's what I enjoy. It's what I, what is, it's, I'm really interested in people, interested in the development, helping them, and, and really want to help them be better leaders. Um, but B, I also believe that, that's what makes the difference. Mm. That's, if I can give them confidence, belief, develop their leadership further, I know when I leave them, they will just be better leaders and will get better performance. How important is culture and how have you instilled Boots values into your people? The thing that's unique to Boots, because I've got lots of friends and colleagues in other organisations, I think is this, is, is very much more about, it is more about the culture than it is about processes. And it is this cu culture that 
people, people do genuinely care. So the values I talk about, I feel from my leaders, I feel from um, other people in the wider organisation. Um, and um, I think what's, what's unique about it is this, um, how, we, how we lead change and how we, so how we really pull t together to focus on behaviours and engagement and rather than just moving into actions and, and doing. So I don't know that answers the question, but there is something for me about this organisation and, and what I've brought to Boots Highland is um, to truly help people feel, get the context, feel involved, feel that we care about them. Um, and we can't, I, well, I can't call it leader-led change. So in anything, because change is everything now, isn't it? You can't, we change all the time. Um, and the, the bit for me is, um, we absolutely always think about how we're going to lead this change in a leader-led way, which means everybody hears about the change from their leader. Mm. We never let it happen in any other way. So we don't want you hearing from a colleague or from somebody, whatever it is or how small it is, we work very hard to keep communicating and communicating through the leaders to manage that message. At the end of the day, um, people are your number one asset. I certainly believe in Boots that people are everything to us. They are our organisation. Without them, we don't we don't have a business. We don't have an organisation. We don't have a future. Um, and it's it, it's so important that you help your people um, feel great about that because people spend a lot of time coming to work. They spend and they come to work to do a good job. You've got to genuinely believe that people get out of bed in the morning to come to work to do a good job. And if you can get them a, a real reason to enjoy being at work. Because people do want to make a difference in the main. They do want to um, be contributing and helping other people feel good. If you can get them to really understand that and, and for them to feel great, then everything else will, will just follow in a business. You, you will start to get the other things. Without that, you, you're like missing out a step and trying to jump over a big river. or You, know, you can't get to the next level without truly getting your people um, on board and engaged. Or it will be short term. You might get some short term results. You won't get a long term um, growing business. Mm. I've always believed, and I, uh, someone taught me many, many years ago, um, and it's a well-known business model, that if you get the right leadership in a business, if you get your people feeling great about working for the business and feeling part of it, you will get great customer care. They will give great customer care. Your customers will, will love boot, or love the organisation, love Boots and be loyal, and your numbers will follow. And I've, I started out many years believing in that, and I still fundamentally believe in that. So if you get... Um, your leadership absolutely right and your leadership focused on um, really making uh, the business a great place for people to be, everything else becomes part of that. And it isn't soft because, um, again, there was work done that recognised that in retail businesses, if you increased your great place to work by about five percentage points, your sales would follow by, sorry, if you increase, if you increase your customer care by five percentage points, your sales would follow. I absolutely know our customer care in Ireland alone has increased by five percentage points in the last 12 months. I know that's been down to the work that we've done on truly helping leaders to be better leaders, helping our people to be at their best for customers. And I know that regardless of the economic context, which makes it very, very hard to measure what's the impact on your sales number, but I believe that it has made a difference. I go into stores, I can feel the difference. Our customer loyalty has increased dramatically. That's down to the people in our stores. So finally, Debbie, I want to look for advice for organisations that are looking to become great places to work. I want you to imagine if you were to leave Boots today, and I'm not suggesting that you should, where would you start with a new company in taking them on that journey to being a great place to work? Oh gosh, really big question. Um, first and foremost, I'd absolutely start by um, truly understanding where what people were saying within the business. I think that would be hugely important. How did people feel about working in that business? Um, what were they really saying? Not just what were they saying to certain people on a, you know, a store visit or a, a management visit. Um, and I'd, I'd be vis very bit visible. So I spent my first few months, at, if it was a retail business, I'd be in the retail business, I'd be in the shops all the time. Truly listen, just listening to all of the people, what they're saying, but also, um, bringing my leadership and my values and not just talking about them, not standing up at a conference and saying what they were. Mm. I'd be living them in the stores in the way that I've treated people. Um, and at the same time, I'd be working on my leadership team. I'd be really working on um, um, helping my leadership team think about where you're trying to take this business. What's the context here? What's the culture you want in this business? What's the behaviours you want in this business? Um, and how's that congruent with um, the ambition 
for the business and a bit aligning all of that um, and uh, having those having those conversations and just, you know I was having the conversations to say did I have the right leadership team that was going to take me on that journey did I have the leadership team with the right behaviours not skills more behaviours because I you, you can train skills behaviours and attitudes tend to be come from people's core values perfect Debbie well thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us today we really appreciate the time thank you